Hello mga kapatid, welcome po sa ating online worship service. Kayo pong mga nanonood po dyan sa inyong, inyong mga kanya-kanyang pamamahay, welcome to our Sunday worship service. Mga kasitues, mga kaibigan, kapamilya, kapuso, kakwarantin at mga kalockdown po namin. Stay at home, stay safe and sit back and relax as we listen to the word of the Lord. And if you are ready, let me start with this. Meron pong isang kabataan ang tumanggap ng isang regalo. At tong regalong ito, the gift uh, he, I'm talking about is a gift that he has never dreamed of. Hindi niya pinangarap. Kahit sa guni-guni, hindi po niya ito pinangarap. Ano po ang kanyang natanggap? Isang brand new Ferrari. <laughs> brand new car, which is Ferrari, latest model. At uh, itong kabataan ito ay tuwa-tuwa. Sabi, halos tumalun sa tuwa itong batang ito. Kasi iniisip pa lamang niya, wow, napakaganda nito. Kapag titingnan ko sa harapan, eh, ang ganda-ganda nung harapan, yung mga curves, kung pa, yung sculpture niya, yung papano yung mga uh, halos uh, gusto niyang hawakan. Titingnan mo sa harapan at maging yung mga tao na titingin hanggang sa likuran. Wow! They will be looking at it from afar. Bakit latest model and it is a Ferrari. And this young kid also imagine, ano kaya itsura ng loob? Yung loob, the, the steering wheel, the dashboard, di ba? He will be operating all of those. Inisip rin niya yung, yung uh, uh, upholstery, that leather seat, sobrang komportable at pag, kapag ito po ay kanyang sinakyan, wow! Grabe nga, sabi nga, number one. Pero alam niyo po, nung ibinigay na po sa kanya yung pang-start, susi, eh alam niyo po, biglang nalungkot po itong kabataan ito. He just, uh, his face changed, it became sad, and uh, he just bowed down. Tinanong siya, oh bakit ka malungkot? Hindi kasi ako marunong mag-drive eh. Nalungkot itong batang ito. Ano po. At pagkatapos nun, sabi niya, Parang ang hirap naman ito. Parang parang pahirap pa itong nangyari sa akin. So, unti-unti, yung kabataan na yon ay lumayo, tinitingnan yung kotse. At sa kanyang paglayo, tumalikod na po siya hanggang siya po ay lumayo na ng lumayo. Forgetting everything. Parang sabi niya, wala na. Wala na. Hindi ko na makukuha ito. And you know, today, some people are, are thinking about God. God is a great God. God is a miracle-working God. But pag iniisip nila, paano ko kaya ito makukuha? Paano ko kaya siya malalapitan? Kapag nakikita nila, parang ang hirap. Parang napaka-distant niya. Uh, ang gagawin po ng mga tao, hindi lalapit sa Diyos, although may kailangan, palayo ng palayo, hanggang siya ay tumalikod, makalimutan, sumabay na sa takbo ng mundo. Nais ko pong sabihin sa inyo mga kapatid, marahil yung mga tao ngayon ay nalulungkot dahil po sa mga pangyayari sa kapaligiran. Iniisip po nila ang Panginoon Diyos, iniwan sila. Maybe God quit on them. Maybe God has abandoned His post. Or maybe God resigned. Alam mo kapatid, ito pag-uusapan natin ngayon. God never resigns. Ang Panginoon Diyos na sinasamba nating lahat, Hinding hindi nagre-resign. He is in control and He knows what He is doing up to this moment. Bago po tayo magpatuloy, ano po? This is the title, God Never Resigns. Let me invite everyone to please bow down your head and close your eyes. Father God, we come to you in faith. We know you are here and your hand is upon us all today. While we are watching this episode, Lord God, heal us. Protect us. Allow us, Lord God, to pass through this crisis, Lord God, nang may pananampalataya sa iyo. Pagpalain mo nga po kami as we hear your word today. Change us to a better person. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One thing I would like everyone to know, since God never resigns, God is doing a great work for greater good and a greater Future. Tandaan po natin yan. Kasi po, ito po ang narealize ni Habakkuk, the, an Old Testament prophet, when he saw 
so much chaos, so much disappointing events in the land of Israel. And he was asking the Lord, tanong siya ng tanong, complain ng complain, itong si Habakkuk, Lord, ano ba nangyari? Parang gusto niya niyang magwelga, naiinip na po siya sa kanyang pamamahay, siguro. Tindin siya makalabas, bakit ang gugulo ng mga tao? Pero when he talked to the Lord, when finally he, he spoke to God, and the Lord answered, Nagbago po ang pananaw nito pong ni Habakkuk. And let me share to you our verse for today in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Iisa-isahin po natin ang mga sinabi po ni Habakkuk dito po sa chapter 3 verse 2. And this is when Habakkuk already heard from the Lord of God. And in, in first uh, sentence, O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. Si Habakkuk po na nagtatanong sa Diyos ay hindi po binigo ng Diyos. God never disappointed him because the Lord answered. And what is amazing here when Habakkuk heard everything that God told him his reaction was he became afraid siya po daw ay natakot according to New King James Version because he heard the voice of God and he heard the truth about God he became afraid and which brings us to our first point. The knowledge of God brings you to humility. Maganda pong makilala natin ang Panginoon Diyos. Maganda pong maunawaan natin ang mga ginagawa ng Panginoon Diyos. Sa totoo lang mga kapatid, kapag nalalaman mo ang mga sinasabi ng Diyos from the Bible, from the Word of God, it will bring you to humility. Bakit? Mahihiya ka. Kasi ang dami palang ginagawa ng Diyos. Hindi lang ikaw ang kanyang inaalala. <laughs> Hindi lang ikaw ang kanyang iniisip. Sa totoo lang, God, as of today, is protecting you so much because He loves you so much. Some things God will not tell you kasi baka pag sinabi niya sa sa'yo, eh baka mas malito ka pa. Pinakamaganda kung ano yung nakasulat sa salita ng Diyos, yun ang paniwalaan mo. Let us see how Habakkuk heard from the Lord in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Ito yung sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya. Kaya hindi, kaya hindi ko ito sinasabi sa iyo. Eh ngayon nagtanong ka na, itong sabi ng Panginoon that you would not even believe it. Kahit na sinabi sa'yo. Hindi po ba? Sa totoo lang, God is protecting all of us. God has already given us His book, His Bible, up to date, so that we will know God and we will all humble ourselves to the Lord. According to uh, the message version of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, God, I have heard what our ancestors say about you. I'm stopped in my tracks and down on my knees. May bigla pong nangyayari kay, nangyayari kay Habakkuk. He stopped and down on his knees. And when he is already on his knees, another thing happened. He understood what God is doing. In fact, during his time, Habakkuk knew that God was correcting the land of Israel. Kaya pala hahayaan ng Panginoon Diyos ang bansang Babylon to conquer the land because Habakkuk knew, as God told him, that God is going to correct the country Israel. As what was written in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12, Didn't you exist before time began? O Lord, my God, my Holy One, we will not die. Wow, what a great declaration. We will not die. O Lord, you have appointed the Babylonians to bring judgment. O rock, you have destined them to correct us. Kaya pala nangyayari ang mga bagay. 
And sometimes we complain on things. Maganda tingnan po natin na ang ating sarili, baka may gustong itama sa atin ang Panginoon Diyos. Just like what happened in the land of Israel. Sa ngayon po mga kapatid, sa totoo lang, nangyayari na po mas marami na po ang lumalapit sa ating Diyos. In fact, there is a survey today, according to the ABS-CBN, this was dated April 15, 2020. Inilabas po nila ito, kasabay po ng mga lockdown, ano po, Today, many Filipinos, in fact, 83% of Filipinos say religion is very important. Ang mga tao po ngayon, bago pa po yung lockdown, ano po, sinasabi nila religion is very important. And I do pray. Ngayon, mayroon pang social media at mga nangyayari po ngayon, mas marami pa, ano po, uh, ang lumapit sa Panginoon Diyos. Well, isn't it a good news? But let me tell you another news, mga kapatid. According to the survey, the same survey by SWS, in 2019, only 45% of adult Filipinos are coming to church. Mababa pa po sa kalahate. This is the truth. Maganda nakikita po natin ang katotohanan. Ano po? People are saying, yes, maganda ang relihiyon, maganda ang maganda ang panin paniniwala sa Dios. Importante ang relihiyon. Pero tingnan po muna natin ano po, sino ang pumupunta sa simbahan. Well, the data will say. At aking pong dalangin, mga kapatid, habang dumadanas po tayo ngayon ng, ng uh, uh, quarantine or we are all locked down in our houses, bigyang pansin po natin, pagkatapos kaya nito, saan ang una kong pupuntahan? Ano po? At nawa, with the knowledge of the Lord, we will see that God is doing a greater work. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, it says, O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. I have encircled your work here because God is doing not only a small work, a medium work. Habakkuk concluded that God is doing a great work. A great work for you and for me. Hindi lang ikaw ang iniisip, hindi lang ako ang iniisip, hindi lang ang pamilya mo. God is doing a very great work. At nawa, sabayan po natin ito. Because the next point is, knowing God's work will bring us to greater expectation. Maganda po, mas ma-excite tayo, mga kapatid. Because when we know that God is doing a greater work, in fact, nakikita na po natin sa mga television, it is a great work, it is, it is worldwide, it should bring us to greater expectation. Sabi nga, mamamangha ka na lang sa ginagawa ng Panginoon. Nawa, ito po ang maging dahilan natin para mas lalo po tayong mapalapit sa Diyos. Because we know that the God we trust is doing a great work. That's why you need to have greater expectation. Greater. Pag sinasabing ito, mga kapatid, even your faith in the Lord must be greater up to now. Tawa, mas lumaki na po ito. Gaya, gaya po kasi, mga, mga kapatid, ano po, ang mga tao po, gusto lamang maintindihan ng Panginoon on, on the head knowledge. Nakakalungkot po. Oh, kilala ko ang Diyos. He can do miracle. And sometimes, nandiyan na ang miracle. Hindi pa nila napapansin. <laughs> Hindi po ba? Nandiyan na po ang milagro. Hindi pa napapansin. Kasi nga po, papano mo nakikilala ang Panginoon Diyos? When Moses had known about God, in fact, he trembled. Yung, yung revelation ng Panginoon Diyos sa kanya, siya po ay nanginginig sa takot. I do believe this is the same happened with Habakkuk. By the way, God will not explain you anything. We do not owe God an explanation sa mga nangyayari po ngayon. God will not give you reason. Kahit makipag-reason out ka sa Panginoon, huwag yun ang hanapin mo. Ang hanapin mo sa Panginoon, revelation mula sa Kanya. Ano ang nire-reveal ng Diyos para sa iyo ngayon? And maybe from that revelation, you will be humbled by what you can hear. Huwag mong palalampasin ito, kapatid, kasi ito hindi pinalampas ni Habakkuk. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16, let us see how Habakkuk changed his mindset. I trembled inside when I heard this. See, he was trembling. My lips quivered. Sabi, nanginginig yung kanyang, yung kanyang labi. Ako nararamdaman ko lang ito kapag ako'y giniginaw. 
My legs gave way beneath me. I shook in terror. I will wait quietly for the coming day when disaster will strike the people who invade us. Sabi niya, itong mga mang-aapi sa amin, hihintayin ko kayo naman ang babalikan ng Panginoon Diyos. Kaya ito po ang kanyang sinabi sa susunod na verse. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crops fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, And the cattle barns are empty. In verse 18, Yet I will rejoice. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Wow! Makikita po natin something happened to Habakkuk. Even though he knew of the coming disaster that will come in his nation, still, Revival came in the life of Habakkuk. That knowing God's great work will bring us to revival. Kapag naiintindihan mo, malaki pala ang ginagawa ng Diyos. Maganda kapatid, sumabay ka na, marirevive na yung buhay mo. Marirevive na yung pamilya mo. Marirevive na yung komunidad mo. And what does it mean in Habakkuk? How, how, how can we describe revival? What happened to Habakkuk? Habakkuk's mindset was changed. He prayed that God's work will succeed. Ito na yung kanyang panalangin. There is an unusual interest in the things of God. And there is an evident urgency to be in the presence of God. Yung, yung nakita mo kasi ang ginagawa ng Diyos and you trembled, then everything changed. Nagkaroon ng 180 degrees sa kanilang pong buhay. Ano po, and this is called revival. I believe sa mga nanonood po ngayon kung papaanong tinanggap mo si Kristo, uh, kung papaanong nabago ang buhay mo, and whenever you hear something, new things from the Lord, you have a new view of God, nagkakaroon ng revival. At hindi lamang po doon natatapos yun, mga kapatid. Ano po? Another thing is that knowing that God is doing His work, we will keep declaring His goodness. Yan ang taong na-revive. That is the person who, who had an encounter with God. Sabi nga po kasi dito, going back to the verse, in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, In the midst of the years, make it known. In the midst of the years, make it known. Habakkuk was praying that in the midst of the years, not in the beginning of the years, but not in the end of the years, but in the midst of the years of what is happening in the midst of desperation, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of pandemic. Ano daw? Magbabahagi ka ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Mga kapatid, kung ikaw ay nare-revive sa, sa pakikinig mo ng salita ng Diyos, yung meron kang bagong insight, there is a new perspective about God. Remember this, make known the love of God in your life. Kasi ito po ang gusto ng Panginoon Diyos. Jesus is looking for people who will testify of His great work even up to today. People of God who are listening today, nawa makita po natin how great the work of God is. Jesus is, look, is looking for people who will continuously trust the Lord until the problem has ended. Hanggang sa matapos po ito, mga kapatid, ano po? Jesus is looking for people who will hold on to the Lord until He makes His move. And Jesus is looking for people who will endlessly pray and seek His face until the crisis is over. Ano ang kwento mong maibabahagi, kapatid? Ano ang kwento mo na, na simula nung ma-revive ka ng Panginoon Diyos? Life was never the same. Alam niyo po, in 1996, when I received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, everything was perfectly normal. Kasi ganun ang tingin ko sa buhay kristyano. Normal na kristyano, normal na buhay, normal lang ang lahat ng mga nangyayari. Everything was perfectly normal. And I did it for my family. Sabi nga, itong magandang step. Little did I know, 
I am missing so many things if I just want to be a normal Christian. 2004, somebody gave me this. This is a track which says here, Jesus died to give you life. Ito po ang lagi kong kinikwento sa mga tao. If you want your life to be perfectly normal, yes, receive the Lord. Parang ako rin. Hindi po ba? Pero, nung binigay po sa akin ito, sabi po nung, nung nagbigay, sabi, baka pagdating ng panahon, kailanganin mo. And life goes on. 2004-2005, uh, normal life, normal Christian life. I was serving, I had my family, until 2006, my marriage was falling apart. My kids no longer respects me at all. And, uh, I do have problem with my finances. I do have problem with myself. Little did I know, yung normal na sinasabi ko, eh, pahirap pala ng pahirap. But when I finally opened my wallet, I was so desperate then, I looked back again and found again this, this track, Jesus died to give you life. I did not know what was the message of the Lord during that time. But when I look at the back, I saw the map. And I went to the church that the map was telling. And this is the church. Alam niyo po, pagpasok ko po lamang doon, I didn't know what will happen to me. I went at the far back of the church. Ako na yata yung pinakahuli noon. And then, I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready to seek you. Give me something. And when the musicians started playing, I just went down, I just bowed down my head and concentrated as the music was playing. And then I felt that the presence of the Lord was with me. That was the time I knew that that Sunday service was made especially for me. That the music that was playing was especially done for me. And then it went on as the music played. Then the Lord told me, I came here for you. It was the feeling na naramdaman mo yung presensya ng Panginoon Diyos katabi mo lang. And then I cried. And I cried, and I cried. Finally, I have realized this is now my church. And life was never the same. Doon ko po nakita ang normal na kristyano ay yung merong mga greater things that are happening to you. Hindi ka na yung paggising mo sa umaga, mas higit ka pa sa nangyari sa iyo kahapon. Much better than yesterday. Kaya nga mga kapatid, sa mga nangyayari po ngayon, if you believe that God can do greater things in your life, wag na wag kang papayag na pagkatapos ng COVID-19 quarantine, eh ganun ka pa rin. Hindi ba? Hindi normal, hindi normal pa rin dapat eh. Hindi ba? Dapat it must be something better. In the midst of the years, make it known. Why? Because there is a great God who is not resigning on you. There is a great God who is not quitting on you. He never abandons you. And one thing you will know about the Lord, that even in His wrath, you need to keep trusting the Lord. Kinakailangan daw, kapatid, mas lalo ka pang magtiwala sa Panginoon Diyos. Even in His wrath. At pwede kang humingi sa Panginoon Diyos ng tulong. Pwede kang lumapit sa Panginoon Diyos at hindi hindi ka tatanggihan ng Panginoon Diyos. Let me bring you back to that verse in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. In wrath, remember mercy. And this passage struck me so much. Why? Kasi isinama pa niya ito para makarating po sa atin mga kapatid. Isinama pa niya ito para maintindihan natin na ang Panginoon Diyos hindi naman galit sa mga tao. Hindi rin galit sa kanyang mga anak. Sa totoo lang, gusto lang ng Panginoon Diyos ayusin ang buhay natin. 
At kung hihingi tayo ng habag sa Panginoon Diyos, kaya niyang ibigay. Kaya niyang ibigay. Especially today. God is looking for people who will trust Him, who will remain faithful to Him. Ang tanong ko sa iyo, kapatid, yung pagka alam mo sa Panginoon Diyos, nalalaman mo kung gaano kalaki ang kayang gawin sa iyo ng Diyos. Handa mo bang ilapit ang buhay mo sa Panginoon? O baka ikaw pa rin yung dati na magre-reklamo ka pa rin, sasabay ka pa rin sa, sa takbo ng mundo, na lahat ng mga disappointments laging isisisi mo sa Diyos. Ikaw ba yung tao na lalapit sa Panginoon Diyos at hahangarin mo na samahan ka niya kahit na dumadaan tayo sa pagsubok? At hahangarin mo na nawa Panginoon Diyos, hayaan mong malampasan namin ito at mas magtiwala pa kami sa iyo. Sino po kaya ang magsasabi nito? At sino rin ang magbabahagi at magpapangalap ng pag-ibig ng Diyos? Alam mo kapatid, maaring iniisip mo, the Lord God has abandoned you. The Lord God is now on a social distancing from you. Let me tell you this. God is as close at the mention of His name. Sabihin mo lang sa Panginoon Diyos ang kanyang pangalan, Jesus. Jesus, I need you, Jesus. Hindi ka nahihiya, hindi ka natatakot, at hindi ka manghingiming, manghingi sa Diyos. Kasi ang Diyos alam na alam niya ang lahat. He will never fail you. He will never forsake you. He will never quit on you. Ito po ang sinabi rin ni Habakkuk sa, uh, ni Habakkuk sa Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Yun daw pong mga anak niya na nananatiling tapat at marunong humingi ng habang. Yan ang mananatiling buhay hanggang sa piling ng Panginoon Diyos. Balikan po natin yung kwento ng kotse. Alam niyo po yung kabataan na nabigyan po nung pagkakataon na tumanggap ng kotse at gamitin po ito. Alam niyo, nakakalungkot lang. Hindi man lang niya inalam ang mga bagay-bagay doon sa kotse. And this is what I am thinking. If God is doing greater work, balikan po natin yung kotse. What if? What if? Yung palang kotse na binigay sa kanya, eh meron ng voice recognition. Pag nagsalita pa lamang yung bata, nasabihin, open this car, start the engine. Eh nando na, mag- magsisimula ng gawin, yung, yung, mag-start na po yung sasakyan. And what if that car has a face recognition? Hindi ba, malungkot ka, galit ka, masaya ka, or whatever. Hindi ba, pag nakita na yung mukha mo, kahit saang panig ka, gagalaw na pala yung, 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 yung coaching yun, mag start na pala, magsasalita na rin siya. Sir, what do you want me to do? What if, what if, yung palang coaching yun, pag tinabihan lamang nung may-ari, kasi kilala na siya nung may-ari, eh, bubukas na kagad ang pinto. I do not know if there are cars like this, but I do know God can make that one. And what if, again, what if, nilikha pala ng Diyos yung coaching yun para pagsakay mo sa loob. Hindi na ikaw hahawak ng manibela. Bakit? Self-driving pala yung kotse. Alam mo kapatid, there are many things you have to learn from God. Ang problema lang po, we think that God is always far away from us. Sa isip lamang, 
at nakakalimutan natin na pwede natin siyang lapitan. Remember this bago po tayo magtapos. Gustong sabihin sa iyo ng Panginoon, whatever the situation is, maybe you are looking at God and just cannot come to Him. Remember this, God never resigns. He did not abandon you. Hindi ka lamang niya pinakikitaan ng something na masarap o maganda para hindi mo maabot. Lahat ng pinangako sa iyo ng Diyos, kaya niyang ibigay sa iyo. Ikaw lang ang hinihintay ng Panginoon Diyos. At bago po ako magbagtapos, mga kapatid, uh, I just want to invite everyone. You know, if God changed my life, if God changed Habakkuk's life, God changed his mindset because Habakkuk allowed God to reveal to him, you who are watching this, the moment You receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You invite Him in your heart. Nagkaroon ka na ng access para sa kaharian ng Panginoon Diyos. And Jesus died to give you life. He died for you. And He wants to have that personal relationship with you. If you want this to happen in your life, allow Jesus to enter into your heart. Let me invite you in a very simple prayer. Just bow down your head and close your eyes. Father God, I know I have sinned, but because of your great love, you sent your Son, Jesus, to die and pay for all my sins. Please forgive me, Lord. I repent of all my sins, known and unknown. This time, Lord, I'm telling to you sincerely, come into my heart, come into my life, and be the King and Lord of my life. Bless me, O Lord. Teach me how to come to you faithfully, always, that in the middle of any kind of crisis, in good times and bad times, I will be able to come to you, to know more about you, and to know the greater things you have in store for me, that I may live faithfully in you. Bless me, O Lord. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, kapatid, you have become part of the children of God. Now you have an access to the Lord God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. At bago po tayo magtapos, mga kapatid, uh, yung pamamaraan ng Panginoon Diyos para po tayo ay pagpalain, ito po ay mula sa pagbibigay ng ating ikapu at handog. Because God already gave us so much. And our job is to return what is His. Ano po yun? Yung ating pong mga ikapu. At ang ating pong mga handog. And if you are right there, you can just uh, raise your, your ties, anything, whatever is in your heart. Father God, I know you are the God who heals. You are the God who protects kung bakit po kami ay naririto pa sa aming mga pamamahay, nakakapanood pa ng broadcast na ito, Panginoon, it is because you are doing a great work to all of us. And you never resigns. And right now, Lord God, as we lift our tithes and offering, Lord God, pagpalain mo nga po yung mga anak, Panginoon Diyos. Turuan mo kami habang hinihintay namin yung gagawin mong malaki, Panginoon Diyos yung gagawin mong solusyon. Panatiliin mo kaming malusog at maayos, Panginoon Diyos. At ganun din sa mga tithes and offering na ito, gamitin mo po, Panginoon, para mas lalo pang maipahayag ang iyong banal na salita. Salamat, Panginoon. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At yan po mga kapatid, ang ating pong uh, mensahe mula sa Panginoon Diyos. I hope everyone will stay safe as we wait for this coming day na tayo pong lahat ay magkakasama-sama sa ating pong simbahan. Ano po? I do believe it's very, very soon. Stay safe, stay at home, and keep trusting the Lord. Bye-bye, everyone. God bless you.